Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on Beetlejuice. I made this doll completely from scratch in a previous video uh, a while ago, a little longer ago than I'd like to admit, but he hasn't quite lived up to my expectations. I made him with movable joints. He is actually strung, so he's, he's pretty floppy. I mean, however, as floppy as he is, he does not stay in any position I want him to. I know what you're saying, Aira, you made Beetlejuice and you expect him to do what you want him to do? You expect him to behave? You expect him to be on his best behavior around the Beetlejuice house? I know, it's a lot to ask. But because he was my first handmade strung doll, today I want to fix him so hopefully my future dolls are a little bit more poseable. This is going to be more of an informal, shorter video. I just needed something that I could do pretty quickly. And this has been a project that I've wanted to fix for quite a while. I don't think he'll mind being taken apart and put back together again. He is Beetlejuice after all. Thankfully, I recorded the entire process, so hopefully I can look back if I have any questions about how I put him together. And thankfully, I made the clothes removable, so I'm not going to have to ruin any clothing in order to fix the structure of his body. So let's prep the patient. First of all, I'm going to give you a demonstration of what the problem is. So here you can see the doll I made. I will make sure and put a link to the original video showing how I created him in the description box below. As you can see, his head moves all the way around and his joints are just really flimsy. He's very flexible, just um, he has one position that his body wants to stay in all the time. So when I try to put him in something like a sitting position, he doesn't want to stay sitting. His arms and legs pop out, and for some reason his head always goes to the left. So definitely not a perfect build my first time making a strong doll. However, I do have a plan to fix him so that I don't have to start completely from scratch. Oh, he also does not stand up. So as much as he wants to stay in the standing position, he does not have enough strength to stand up. I did put a hole in his lower back, so hopefully I could use one of these Figma stands to help him stand up, but that still does not help very much, and he just, he just constantly wants to flop. So here is the best I can get him standing without the help of him standing against something else. So let's see if we can figure this out. I'm gonna need my doll, some wire clipping tools, some tweezers, my craft knife, and of course, glue. I'm going to try a few different types of wire, so I'm just grabbing whatever I have in my collection, and we'll do a few experiments to see what will work best. So let's get started on taking him apart. It is at this moment I am very thankful I worked so hard to make his clothes removable. I originally did this because I wanted to possibly make him some other outfits. He has a few different outfits in the movie, but now it's just really coming in handy because most of my dolls, such as the Adams Family dolls, their clothes are permanent and it would be pretty, I'd pretty much have to ruin their clothing in order to get underneath and fix their bodies. But this is all one piece for the jumpsuit, the jacket is a separate piece, and his shoes are removable as well. I think it's really funny his little outfit looks like when the wedding clothes started to puff up during the movie. I did cover his back and all the string connections with a little bit of quilt batting. Thankfully, that is pretty easy to remove. I think I just put that on there with tacky glue, so I can just rip it off and now you can see where all of the strings are connected. And the blue tack in his lower back is because I just couldn't get him to stand up and I was hoping blue tack would help, but it didn't. So here you can see how unruly his limbs are. The legs just go everywhere. It's easier to see now that his clothing is off that just nothing wants to have any sort of strength to it. I'm going to be drawing a little sketch of his body so that I can sketch out my plan before getting to work. This helps me think everything through and make sure I'm very positive about what I want to do. This hopefully will keep me from destroying any of the pieces. One of the things I know I need to fix is the fact that his upper thighs 
just constantly spin in the sockets. There's nothing that keeps them in place. So hopefully some kind of string through those areas will help. I also want to add a wire through the mid torso down each limb and I'm hoping the wire is what's going to give the strength so that these limbs will stay in place once I bend them. There is a chance that wire can break but hopefully I can make this so that the wire is easy to replace. Now as I said his head turns continually to the left but honestly I can still pose his head in any direction I want. So I'm going to leave his head alone. I don't want to do anything to make it to where it doesn't pose where I want it to pose. So him looking off to the left is fine. I'm going to be using some flush cutters to cut through the elastic strings that are holding each of the limbs in place. I'm doing this because I do think I'm going to have to drill into the hands and feet and it's going to be much easier to do if everything is apart. Now to look at the wires I have. I have this silver armature wire, but it is much too soft. I can bend it too easily and I'm afraid it's going to break. I also have this Christmas ornament wire and it just didn't stay where I wanted it to. And when I got to this flower wire, I think it had the perfect mixture of strength and also staying in the position where I wanted it to stay. So I'm going to try out the floral wire and see how this works. Here's the package if you want to look at the type that I have and the gauge. To begin the drilling process, I'm looking for a drill bit that is just about the same diameter as my wire. This is because I'm going to be drilling in a little pocket for the wire to insert into. I'm putting that into my Dremel, being careful with my fingers, and then drilling into the top of the leg. Hopefully this will allow me to insert the wire into the leg and this will kind of be its holding spot so that I don't have to glue it in place permanently. I keep checking to see how deep I have drilled. I also drilled a hole in the hands. Hopefully I'll be able to show you clearly how this works once we get to the portion where I'm adding in the wires and adding back the elastics. I'm also going to be using my drill to drill the hole through the thighs and the lower torso. This is because I wanted to connect those thighs so they weren't just rotating around in the socket. Uh, that made the legs really, really hard to control trying to make sure that the holes are even on both sides and drilling through on top of a piece of this card, really, really thick cardboard is a great thing to drill on top of to make sure I don't drill through the top of my desk, which I have done before. Don't worry guys, he is fine. Uh, he can't feel a thing, I'm pretty sure. I'm very glad I used epoxy sculpt for his body. His body is very, very strong because of that and I feel comfortable drilling into these very small pieces and not thinking that they're going to break. Now we're going to be using this elastic cord, which it says it's great for little fingers, which is perfect because we have 10 little fingers we're going to be attaching to his body. This is the same cord I used the first time around. It worked really well, so I'm going to use it again. I'm threading it through the upper arm and the lower hand. This is the exact same way I did it the first time. All I did and the only reason I had to take the elastic part apart is so that I could drill into the extremities. Now that the arm is back together, I'm going to show you how I plan to add in the wire. I'm cutting off a piece that I think will be long enough and I'm going to thread it through all the same holes that the elastic went through except it's only going to go one way. It's not going to go down into the hand and then back up. By doing this, I'm going to also thread it into the hole that I drilled into the hand piece. So see that little hole there? I'm going to insert the wire and it's going to go in about a half inch so that the wire is now inside of the hand. This will allow it to bend and hold its shape. I do not plan to glue it in place in case I ever have to change out the wire if the wire gets too worn and breaks in half. Now I can thread both the wire and the two elastic pieces through the hole that's up near the shoulder. I'm making sure that the wire is staying snugly in the hand cavity that I originally put it into. And then I'm going to tie the elastic pieces to one of these little rings, just like I did before. 
I'm showing you this process really up close and detailed for this one arm, and it's going to be the same exact process for each limb. I'm just going to tie it onto the ring, and the excess wire is going to be sticking out. Just like the other end of the wire, I don't plan to glue it down. Instead, I'm going to take a wire tool and just curl it up so that it won't have the chance to go back out the shoulder hole. It's just going to be kind of be knotted in place, similar to the tie I've done for the elastics. And then in the event that the wire breaks, I should be able to pull it straight out of the arm. So here's how it's looking. It is so much easier to control. It's staying in place and I'm very happy with how easy it was just to slide the wire in. And I actually found that I could control it by pressing on the end of the wire in the back. So I'll have to remember that in case I decide to do some kind of automaton type build in the future. Now that I knew it was working, it was just taking the time and the patience to thread and wire the other arm as well. But really, I was so excited that it was working that I was happy to keep going and keep working on his body. The legs were done the same exact way by adding in the elastic cord, just like I did the first time I created him, and then adding the wire up through the top of the leg, down through the knee, and then into the very small hole at the bottom of the leg. And this wire went further into the leg than it did the hand. Of course, the leg's a little bit bigger, but I didn't realize, I think I put a straw inside of the leg and the wire came out the bottom of the foot. So it went pretty deep in there. Thankfully, when I wrap the end of the wire inside of the torso, that will prevent it from going too far down through the foot and sticking out the bottom of his foot. I ended up cutting the cord a little bit too short on this one, so it was hard to tie, but it does work just as well as the arms, so I was really happy with the results. But as you can see, that upper thigh still wants to turn in its socket, so I am going to have to add the thread through the thighs and the lower torso area. So let's do that now. I am just going to be using an elastic cord like I've used everywhere else. This is going to keep it from turning and going in the opposite direction. I threaded it through all of the holes and then just made a small knot on either side of the thigh. I was a little worried you'd be able to see this through the clothing, see that there's like some bump underneath there, but you really can't. But if I could see it and it was bothering me, what I could have done is taken a larger drill bit and made a cavity in the side of the thigh so that when I made the knot, it sat inside of the cavity instead of sticking outside the thigh. Then I cut off the excess elastic and just covered the knot with a little bit of tacky glue. This is going to keep it from unraveling since I cut it so close to the end of the knot. After that dries, I can go ahead and add his clothes back on, which I'm sure you're all really thankful for. After I had put all the wire in, I did think, hey, maybe I should do some kind of stress test on this wire to see how easy it is to break. I uh, probably should have done that beforehand, but I bent it back and forth quite a bit over and over trying to break it in one spot and it didn't break. So hopefully this lasts a while, but if not, hopefully it's easy to change out and I can always try another wire next time. Before going to the trouble to put his clothing back on, I did try to do a test pose to see if it was working the way I thought it would in my head, and he was a lot easier to pose and looked a bit more natural than he did before. So I decided to go with this, and if I come up with something different in the future, I can always do another update. But since I'm happy with it, I'm going to start the tedious process of getting his clothing back on. One thing I will say for the floppy limbs was they were a lot easier for him to get dressed. Now that there is a little bit of pushback when it comes to the way his arms bend, it was a little bit more difficult to get his jacket on. So I had to relearn how to dress him and it wasn't too hard. I just pushed his arms backwards so that they both went through the sleeves at the same time. I probably could have forced it to go through there the way I had done it before, but I didn't want to put too much stress on the wire. I do want them to last as long as they can. So here he is, I can already tell he's way less floppy, has a lot more strength to his legs and his arms now that they're posed. 
I am beyond excited to have finally fixed this problem. He is already standing up so much better. Well, he's standing. <laughs> I feel like before he didn't really have any bones. He didn't have any, maybe it's tendons. Cause I guess he had bones, but the bones weren't helping. He needed muscles and tendons to help him stand up. And I feel like he has that a little bit more now. I can get him to sit on the couch and it looks much more natural. I don't have to use masking tape to get his feet to stick to the floor. <laughs> so I'm very, very happy. It's still not perfect. I'm sure there's probably a lot better options out there, but I don't want to completely redo the entire doll. I don't want to completely re-sculpt his body. So for this doll, I feel like I came up with one of the best solutions for what I already had. Going through this has made me think that I'm probably going to do the other dolls differently and hopefully they will be less of a struggle by doing that. When I first started this project, one of my hopes was that throughout the project, I could pose the Beetlejuice doll, which is one of the reasons I made it first throughout the project, but that just hasn't happened because he was way too frustrating to pose. So I think it'd be fun to do a few photo shoots. Now the Beetlejuice house doesn't have the lights hooked up or anything like that. So we'll just see what we can get, but I gotta make up for some missed time with posing him so I'm going to do that now. And because the Beetlejuice house is just really not set up right now, I may also pose him in a few other projects. So I hope you enjoyed this photo montage. I know this was a bit of a shorter video and I only did one project, which was really just fixing a project that I didn't know how to do all the way correctly in the first place. But this is part of miniatures as well. Many times we make something where we don't fully know how to make it and down the road we're like, hmm, I wish this was a little bit better. And so it's a good idea to take the time to try and fix those things so they can continue to be valuable to us in our miniature projects. I guess since I finished this project pretty quickly and this is gonna be a shorter video, I can actually ask you a few questions about the Beetlejuice project. Um, my main one being, what do you think I should do for Beetlegust? Beetlegust is when I make a Beetlejuice themed project all August long and that is coming up. Now I'm thinking about making the Saturn scene and I really don't know how many weeks that is going to take me or should I make more dolls, make more of the family because I haven't made any of the Dietzes, I haven't made Barbara and Adam, but last Beetle Gust, I made all the dolls in the waiting room. So I don't know if y'all are tired of dolls. I just, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Or do you want me to just get on with the construction of the house? Because I do have more to build. I need to get the tower built. I need to get the second floor built. I also need to finish up the living room. Would you like me to finish the living room? There's so many things. There's so many different directions that I could go. So I would love to hear your opinion down in the comments. And maybe if there's like a few that are like the top asked for, I might put a poll on the community tab and um, so y'all can vote, but I'm kind of split on what to do for Beetle Gust. So yeah, I'd love to hear your opinion. Thank you for joining me for the question segment. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. We're spinning. Spinning with Stormy. There you go. Got what you wanted. Stormy's in charge of the channel now. All Stormy 100% of the time. You gotta make stuff now. You gotta make miniatures. Here, I'll move my project over. With some glue? They're waiting. What are you gonna make? 
You're so silly. You're so silly. Sorry, you're stuck with me. 